Hello, and welcome to Scattered Terrain. My name is Meredith, and today I'm going to be showing you how I make my altar. I built this altar to go with a specific encounter map, so I used the map that was included in the module as my reference photo. Then working from that reference photo, I did my best to turn what was a 2D drawing into a three-dimensional build. Here are the final dimensions I came up with. I'll list these in the description down below. I'll be making the altar out of XPS foam, so my first step is to grab my Proxon hot wire cutter. I keep it set around three. I cut a one and a half inch circle out of my inch thick XPS foam. And then I cut that in half to give me two half inch thick circles. Then I'm gonna reset my gate at one inch away from the wire, and I'm gonna flatten one side of one of my circles. That'll allow it to sit flush against the back of the altar. Then you're gonna wanna set your cutting wire to about an eighth of an inch and grab your other half inch circle. You're gonna slice this roughly into thirds and it should give you just a little sliver as the fourth piece. Then you're gonna take those discs and stack them on top of each other, slightly offset to create stairs. Then grab that final sliver that came off and set it on top as a guide. Once you have everything stacked up, grab a couple of straight pins and use them to help keep your foam in place and then very carefully you're gonna trace that top edge so that you have three steps around a curve. Then I'm gonna move my pins towards the center of the stairs, making sure to stab in through the back before I angle down, that way you won't see any pinholes when we're done. And whenever I'm pinning things, I always use at least two pins. If you only use one pin, sometimes that'll just act as a pivot point. When you put that second pin, it locks everything in place. And I want my steps to be three quarters of an inch wide, so I'm gonna grab my ruler, and then I'm gonna mark three eighths of an inch to either side of the center. And I'm gonna do this on the top and the bottom, and then just draw a little bit of a line connecting them. Then I'm gonna use that line as a rough guide and cut the excess off with my hot wire. All right, and now we have these curving stairs. And then I just cut out all of the remaining pieces of foam based on those dimensions that I calculated. I'm gonna wanna add some side rails to my stairs, so I planed off an extra thin piece of foam in order to freehand cut out those pieces later. And then we'll just cut all of the little decorative top pieces for our columns. And the decorative cap is actually the exact same size as the column itself. I just use a slightly larger square in between the two pieces to give it some interest. Speaking of, we'll get those columns cut here. And then I'm just gonna measure the flat edge of my circle to make sure that it's going to fit against the back of my altar as I intended. If anything doesn't quite line up, now's the time to find out and make those alterations. And with my test fit here, perfect. That's gonna work exactly the way I want it to. And then as a final step here, I wanna give some decorative additions to my altar. So I'm gonna take a piece that I've cut slightly smaller than the back of the altar and then laying the piece flat on the proxon, I'm gonna use the hot wire to just scallop off the corners of this piece. And then I'm going to adjust my wire to give me paper thin slices of foam, and I'm going to cut several slices off of this block. I always make sure I have at least one piece for the front, one piece for the back, and one piece extra just in case something happens. And just to give you a bit of an idea what I'm going for, here's what it's gonna look like. And then the piece on the front is gonna need to stop where it hits the circle. So one of the slices I'm going to cut in half. All right, and then we can just get him out of the way. Starting with the piece that I've already got pinned, let's glue together the stairs. So I'm just gonna grab my undiluted PVA glue and put a nice dollop on the back here. And then very gently, I'm gonna separate off each step and work some of the glue in between the layers. Then press everything together and use your finger to just work that excess glue around and make a nice coat. And if you have any white glue squish out between the cracks in front, just use your finger to pull away the excess. Then once that's dry, you can pull out the straight pins. And if you find they're difficult to pull out, try giving them a little bit of a twist or a wiggle and they should come free. Then we'll just give it a quick test fit here. Looking good. So I'm gonna grab that extra little bit of foam that we planed off to make the edges of our staircase. I know I'm going to need to do both sides of the staircase, so I'm just gonna cut this foam in half. And then using the stairs as a guide, I'm gonna grab my pencil and trace a line just above the edge of the stairs. That way I'll have a little bit of a lip, but it won't get in the way. And make sure to trace that back edge of the stairs as well so that it'll sit flush against your circle. 
Then just follow that line with your X-Acto blade to cut it out. Now when it comes to cutting that back edge that you want to have sitting flush to the circle, you're going to want to cut that at an angle. So instead of cutting straight up and down, you want to tilt the blade to about a 45 degree like this. That way when you make your cut it will be beveled. And it should look something like this. Then using this piece as our template, we're going to cut out the other side. So I'm just going to hold this over my other piece of foam and use the X-Acto straight against the edge. If anything happens and I slip, it'll still be on both pieces that way. Then I'm going to use the grid on my table to help me make a matching bevel on this piece. I'll keep the edges of the two pieces together and then I line up where the top of my beveled edge is with the line on the table. That tells me exactly how to angle my blade so that the two bevels match. Oh, and it looks like... Yep, I made them match so well I forgot one of them needs to be the mirror image of the other. So I'm going to do the exact same thing again, cutting out another piece using this first piece as my template. But when the time comes to bevel the edge, I'm going to make sure to flip this piece over first and bevel the opposite direction. So instead of stacking them on top of each other, I'm going to set them base to base like this. And then keeping the top of my blade lined up with the line, and aiming for the bottom of my blade to end up about where the other edge was, I cut my bevel. And I've got just a little bit of extra foam sticking up here I'm gonna shave off. There we go, now I've got my mirrored pieces. Give it another quick test fit here, make sure it's gonna do what I want it to. All right, looking good. We'll set these aside for now and move on to carving the stone circle. You're going to want a very sharp pencil for this, so I'm gonna grab my sharpener real quick. I'm going to start with carving a circle onto the top of our circle, but aiming to keep it anywhere from an eighth to a quarter of an inch away from that edge. And the first pass with the pencil I'm going to move very lightly and delicately to make sure that I don't tear my foam. It also helps to work delicately on this first pass so that if your pencil wanders a little bit and you don't exactly like where your line is, you can adjust it before you come back and make it a firm, solid line. And once you're happy with that guiding line, come back a second time and dig in a bit deeper with your pencil and really define that groove. I'm not using the X-Acto blade first on this because I don't want it to be quite that clean a line. I don't want it looking like these are separate stones. I want this to look like a carving. Then I'm going to mimic this same design around the outer edge, but because I can't see the whole edge at once, I'm going to measure on this. So I'm going to give myself little guiding lines all the way around the outside of the circle at an eighth of an inch down from the top edge. And once I've got those guiding marks in place, I just come back and make that heavier pencil line playing connect the dots. And then I come back and do one smooth pass with the pencil to help clean up any rough bits. And make sure that you carry that pencil line around into the back. You don't want it looking like it ends right up against the wall. You want it to look like it wraps around a bit. All right, and then the next step is going to be to draw our divisions on these side walls. So I'm going to grab the stairs and hold them in place. And then using my thumb, I'm going to mark out roughly where I want my dividing line to be. Then I'm going to come back with the pencil and deepen that line, making sure to carve under to the bottom. And then I'm going to mirror it over to the other side. And I'm going to use my thumb as sort of a rough measuring guide here. You can see it's just about the width of my thumb to that mark. So I'm going to put my thumb on the other side. Double check and make sure that looks about right, and carve in my other line. And that still leaves an awful lot of open space there on the end. Putting my stairs back in place, yeah, I think I need to divide that final block one more time. So using the pencil, we're just going to divide that back stone in half. And make sure to do that on the other side as well. Alright, yeah, that looks better. Then I also am going to want to divide that ring of stone around the top edge. So I'm going to mark out where the center is on my circle, and then deepen that line into a groove. And make sure to carry it all the way around the corner and down to your other line, that way it looks like its own little section. And then I'm going to hold my stairs in place and decide where it looks best to have the lines. It looks like I'm going to want to divide each side into three. So I'm going to just rough out where I think those marks are going to be, and then come back and deepen that with my pencil. Now at this point, this bit of foam has become rather thin, so in order to keep from breaking it, I'm just going to pre-cut with the X-Acto blade here, and then follow along with the pencil. 
Anytime that you're worried that your pencil might start to tear at the foam, go ahead and give that pre-cut with the X-Acto. And again, making sure that we carry all of the lines down to our edge on the side. Moving now to the back of the altar, in the reference image, there was a groove carved along the back. So I'm gonna go ahead and make that groove now. It's always good to have a channel to allow things to flow off of your ritual surface if necessary. Sacrifices can be so messy. Now that all of our main carving is in place, it's time for texture. I'm gonna grab that aluminum foil ball and just gently go over the surface here. Then I'm gonna stack my pieces together and grab my other texturing tool, which is made from train ballast and green stuff rolled onto the tip of a pencil, and I'm gonna use that to hit this top edge. I'm also gonna use that same tool in order to texture each individual step. And you wanna make sure you get both the top and leading edge of each step. Anywhere that you don't remember to texture the foam, it's gonna really stand out when you do the dry brushing. And then I'm gonna use this same texture tool to roll the outside edges. Since the altar is something that was going to be sort of the focal point of the room, it makes sense that the texture of its stone is going to be a little bit finer than the stone everywhere else. That being said, I am going to grab my larger texturing tool and hit just a few spots to give a little bit of extra wear and tear, since this is a very ancient temple. Then I'm going to grab my bottle of PVA glue and put a good dollop on the back of the stairs here, and then press them into place against the main circle. Really give good pressure together. You want any extra white glue in there to come squishing up in between. You can just wipe it off with your finger. And then I'm gonna grab my straight pins and going in through the sides of the steps that we're gonna be covering up later, I'm gonna make a good connection between the stairs and the circle. And just make sure you've wiped off any excess glue. And then keeping all of the pieces together, I'm gonna set this guy aside to dry while we work on texturing the back. So grabbing those same two texturing tools, I'm just gonna make sure to go over all of my surfaces with a nice even texture. But on these side pieces, they're actually never gonna be seen, so I don't need to texture them. I just need to do the top, front, and back. And in fact, because we're gonna be putting that decorative plate on the front and back, we don't actually have to texture the whole front and back, just the edges. And on these decorative pieces, I'm gonna go back to my aluminum foil ball for texture. That way they have a slightly larger texture and it helps them stand out as being a piece of interest. And just do a quick test fit here. Then we'll grab our glue and put a little bit onto the back of our decorative piece. And then I'm gonna just take my finger and work the white glue to cover the entire surface. We don't wanna have any gaps where it can peel up from later. Then just make sure you've got it centered and press firmly to get the two pieces of foam to stick together. Then I'm gonna grab my two options for the front and texture both of them. And we'll just get this extra out of the way here. Then we're gonna grab our columns and texture them as well, also using the aluminum foil ball. When you're using a variety of textures on a build, it's good to repeat those textures in more than one place. If you do something just once on a build, it could look like it was a mistake or an accident. If you do it in multiple places, it's immediately obvious that you did it on purpose. And anytime that you're going to have an exposed corner of your foam, you want to come back with the aluminum foil ball and nick at that edge with it because you don't want to have that perfect factory finish corner. You want it to look worn down. And as the final piece, we're going to grab all of our little decorative caps for our columns. And then we're gonna stack them together to make texturing the edges easier. When you've got these little thin pieces of foam, they can snap quite easily if you put pressure on them. So when you do everything in a stack like this, they lend each other a lot of strength. And then you're gonna do the same thing with the smaller cap pieces and make sure, just like with the big columns, to roll the texture over those corners. And then you wanna make sure that you texture the top of all of the top caps and you wanna make sure to texture at least the outer edges of all of these middle bits. The center won't ever be seen, but the edges will. And whenever possible, I try and stack pieces in a way that allows me to do it sort of production line style, hitting all of the same parts at once. And then once all of our foam pieces are textured, we can do the remainder of our assembly. Let's start with our tallest column pieces. You're going to wanna to take those two middle cap pieces and put a little dot of PVA glue on each of them and then you're gonna take the column and you're going to stand it up in the very center of that square and then press firmly together. Once you've been pressing it for a moment, you can go ahead and flip it over and stick a straight pin in through the other side. So again, we're gonna just grab that column, center it on our middle square, press firmly, and 
and use a straight pin to hold it in place while it dries. And you're gonna follow that exact same process with the two shorter columns. Then we're going to finish off our decorative facing on the back piece of our altar. So grab your circle for reference, and we're gonna check to see how much of that back wall is covered. And then just make a gentle mark with our pencil to show where that circle stops. So we've got two options for our back wall. We want the front piece to match roughly the same distance from the edges as this back piece. So let's do a quick test dry fit here, lining up the bottom of our piece with that mark that we made where the top of the circle is. All right, and it looks like this one is our winner. That looks good. So just as we did with the back, we're gonna put a little bit of PVA glue onto our piece and then work it around with our finger to get good coverage. And then lining up with that bottom pencil mark, we just press gently into place. Once that's dry, it's ready to be attached to the side columns. So we're gonna start off by taking a pencil and digging into the side of the column that we're going to be connecting to the back of the altar. Digging into the foam with the pencil like this gives a lot more area for our glue to grip into and makes a much more secure connection. Then you're gonna to wanna to rough up the sides of that back altar piece as well and add some white glue. Then using a small circular motion, I'm going to push my two pieces together and then add the third piece. And I'm gonna set everybody flat on the table to make sure that I have a good solid flat bottom. Then we're gonna grab the straight pins again and using that little channel that's been carved into the top of the altar, I'm going to use the straight pins to connect downwards at an angle from the top of the back of the altar sideways into those columns, like so and then flip it around and do exactly the same thing on the other side. Now I'm making sure to keep it pinched between my fingers here so that my column stays perfectly centered with my altar. And then since only one pin can be a pivot point and we need a second one, we're now gonna flip the whole piece upside down and still pinching it between my fingers to keep everything straight, we're gonna use a straight pin angled from the column back into the altar and do that on both sides as well. And just to be sure I have a good connection, I'm gonna go ahead and do the reverse from the back of the altar back into the side columns on the bottom here. If it's in a place where you're never gonna wind up seeing those pinholes anyway, I always err on the side of adding a couple of extra pins as opposed to not having enough. Then just give it a quick once over here and use your finger to wipe off any excess white glue. If you wipe it off now while it's wet, it's nice and easy to clean up. If you wait until it's dry, it'll probably bring foam with it. And then once that's dry, we'll just pull out all of those pins. Again, if any of them give you a hard time, try giving it a little bit of a twist and a wiggle and it should pull free. And we'll pull those pins from the bottom as well. I am gonna leave these two pins in place for now for the extra stability. And then you're gonna grab the front half of the altar, which is the circular piece with the stairs, and we're going to attach these two halves together now. So using that same method, we're gonna dig into this section with our pencil and make some nice deep grooves for the glue to grab hold of. And then we're gonna do the same thing to the back edge of our circle. Then you're gonna to wanna to put a good healthy amount of glue onto the back of this and use your finger to really work it into some of those crevices that we made. And then keeping everything nice and flat on the table, firmly press the two halves of your altar together. And I'm just gonna make sure we don't have any extra glue leaking out of the bottom here. And then holding everything firmly in place with one hand, you're gonna push straight pins right through those cracks in the stone and secure your front half and back half together. Then flip it over and do that same pinning technique on the bottom of tacking our two halves together nice and secure. And just double check, make sure that these pieces are completely flush and stick that final pin in. All right, this is coming along nicely. Now we'll just set him aside to dry. And once he's dried, go ahead and take all of those straight pins out. And we're coming to our final step in the foam assembly, so you do wanna make sure to take out all of the straight pins at this point, including these top two. Then we're gonna grab those little side panels that we made to go along the stairs and give them a quick test fit, make sure everything still looks the way we think it does. Perfect, those bevels sit against the edge of the circle nicely. So we'll just rough up that foam a little bit but very gently as these are pretty thin. And then we're gonna do the same thing, just poking some holes into the sides of our stairs and scratching up just the very edge of where they're gonna be touching on that stonework. And then we put a nice dollop of glue onto each little side piece and work that glue in with our fingers. 
and then just press it into place along the side of the stairs. Once you've held it in place for a moment, the PVA glue should get tacky enough to hold it up by itself. Then just do the exact same to the other side, working that glue on with your finger and pressing it into place. And just make sure that they are all the way flush onto the ground. All right, that's looking wonderful. The next piece to add to this are gonna be those two front columns. So I'm gonna give it a quick once over and pick the side I like the least and make a nice little indent into the bottom here where it'll be covered. And then do the same thing with the column for the other side. And then we're gonna do a couple of nice stab marks straight through into our stairs. This way, once all of our glue has dried, it'll all sort of marry together into one shape and it'll be much more secure. Then we'll add some white glue right into those holes that we carved. Work it around a little bit with our finger to make sure we have good coverage. And then you wanna press it firmly in place up against the side of the stairs. Now this isn't terribly secure yet, and if you try to do both sides at once, it may fall apart a bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this half off for now. So making sure everything is flat to the table, I'm gonna pinch it all together with one hand and flip it upside down so that I can use the other hand to push straight pins in from the bottom and tack this piece together with the rest of the altar. And you always wanna make sure you use at least two pins coming from at least two angles, that way the foam can't just slide itself apart. And then I'm gonna use one more little pin here at the edge to make sure that our stair railing stays in place. Then we'll go ahead and put the other side back on, get everything pinched together, make sure everything is exactly where we want it to be, and all flush with the bottom, and then pin it together as well. And I'm gonna tack the end of the stairs together on this side too. Then once again, just use your finger to take off any extra white glue. All right, almost done. We just have one final step, putting on the final end cap pieces. Now you wanna make sure that you're looking at the side that you have textured as being up. If you're having trouble telling the difference, just tip it against the light like this and you should be able to see these two have texture, this one doesn't. So then on the side that is not textured, we're gonna put in a couple of little dots with the pencil just to give the glue something to hold on to. And then we're gonna do that same thing to the top of each column. Then I left the straight pins in on the front columns when I put them in place. You wanna go ahead and pull them out as well. And be very careful not to pull too hard on these front pieces as this glue has not dried yet. Then we put a little dot of white glue onto each cap piece and work it in with our finger. Then set it into place on the top of one of the columns. And you wanna just apply gentle pressure for the first few moments to make sure none of your corners peel up. And you're gonna to wanna to complete this exact same process with all four columns, being very careful with the front two because that drying glue is very delicate. All right, and then give it a quick double check and once over, make sure everything is the way that you want it to be. You have a little bit of time while this glue dries to sort of tweak things into place. And once you're happy with how everything looks, set him aside to dry. Once he's dry, go ahead and gently remove all of the pins holding the final few pieces in place. We'll just get these guys out of the way here. All right, and then we'll just give it a quick test fit and put our sorceress in place on the altar here. Uh-oh. Uh well, it looks like in my math I forgot about one thing. She doesn't quite fit. Luckily, we're still at a stage where this is gonna be very easy to fix. I'm just gonna grab my X-Acto blade and very gently, I am going to cut the corner pieces off of these two front columns. And I am trying to cut it along a very slight curve, sort of following the lower platform as a guide with my cut. Just get those extra pieces out of the way here. And now that we have a newly exposed edge, I'm also going to want to grab my texture roller and just make sure to hit that edge. That way it won't stand out as a smooth surface later. And now let's try that again. Perfect fit. We're ready to move on to our next step, Mod Podge. So grab your jar of Mod Podge and your damp brush, and then you're just gonna give this entire piece a good thorough going over with that Mod Podge. You don't want it to be too thick because it'll obscure the detail, so just work it over and over on the piece until you've got a nice thin coat all over. This is gonna take me a second. While I'm doing this, if you're enjoying the video, why don't you go ahead and click that like button? It helps get the video recommended to more people. 
and once that's dry you want to make sure to come back and do the bottom of your altar as well. Having a good coat of Mod Podge across all those little separate pieces helps to marry them all together and it gives you one more layer of solidity. And I make sure when I'm doing the bottom to just wrap the edge of the Mod Podge up over the sides a little bit and make sure that this coat really bonds to the first coat. Then once that's completely dry we're ready to move on to our base coat. Now because I'm building this altar to match a specific encounter, I want to make sure that it matches the stonework of the rest of the building. This particular temple is described as being an old alabaster or marble building, so my base coat on this is going to be raw sienna. Then still using a damp brush to make the paint application go on better, we're going to just give a thorough base coat of this raw sienna all over our altar. And just like with the Mod Podge layer, you don't want to let it get built up too thick anywhere. It's better to do two thin coats of paint than one thick coat of paint. And as you're working over this, make sure that you're turning it and looking at it from all angles, and make sure that there are no little bits of pink gleaming out at you from underneath an edge that you missed. Once you're sure that it's completely covered, go ahead and set this guy aside to dry. And when that first layer is dry, if you can still see a lot of the pink foam peeking through, just go ahead and give it a second base coat of paint. Now if I do a second base coat, I actually like to keep a little bit of water on hand so that I can continually keep my brush damp as I go. This allows me to put a much thinner layer of paint than I normally would be able to. That helps me guarantee that I can get a nice thin coating that makes sure that I have the coverage that I'm looking for without destroying all of that wonderful texture that we built up. Once that second base coat is dry, it's time to move on to our overbrushing. I'll be using a light mocha for this step. So I'm going to grab my dry brush and work a generous amount of the paint into the brush. Now you don't want to work too much of the paint off on your paper towel, so give it a quick test on the bottom of your piece. Make sure you have the amount of paint on your brush that you think you do. And this is still a little bit much, we'll just work off a little more here. There we go. And then I like to start on all of my problem areas. Anywhere on the piece that I think is going to be more difficult to reach, that's going to be where I start. That way if there are any areas that get accidentally painted while I'm doing that, they don't wind up getting too much paint or an over application. And this altar is a little bit of an odd shape, so you just have to sort of relax and take your time with it. This won't be a quick piece to overbrush. And you want to make sure that you get those sides of the top caps and underneath all of the decorative bits. And when you've gotten your brush to the point that you're not getting much paint transfer off of it anymore, at that point you can start to use it almost in a sponging or dabbing motion to help get some of those hard to reach areas. And just remember, any time that you reload your brush, make sure to test it on your hand before you put it back on your piece. It's really easy to push too hard when you've been getting used to not having enough paint on your brush. And I always make sure to give the bottom of my piece an overbrushing as well. That way if for any reason this piece ever gets tipped over, the bottom is covered. Then once the overbrushing is dry, we're going to grab our wash. For this particular wash, I'm using a burnt sienna craft paint, and I use a ratio of 1 part paint to 10 parts water. I find this gives me a good amount of color without being overwhelming. So you just want to give a nice thorough coating of this wash all over your piece. And if it starts to pool up anywhere, just touch it that with your brush and it'll soak up the extra. And I find that it really helps with strange shaped pieces like this to be sort of methodical in my approach to applying the wash. I work sort of front to back and make sure one piece is completely covered before moving on to the next. And then I give just a quick swipe to the bottom, make sure I don't have any wash pooling up under there. And then give this guy a quick once over, make sure there's no places that stand out as being naked and without the wash. And right there where I was holding it looks a little pale. Alright, looks good. So we'll just set him aside to dry. And once he's dry, we can do our final painting step. Dry brushing. So we're going to go back to that light mocha color. And put a little bit down on my fancy palette here. Then work that into my dry brush. And this time we're going to work almost all of the paint out of the paintbrush and into this paper towel. So when you test it on your hand, you just want the barest amount of paint to come off on the texture of your skin. Whoop! And it looks like I had some paint on my finger when I picked this guy up, so we now have a real hot spot. So I'm just going to take my brush and stab at a couple places here, create a little bit more of a couple of hot spots. And then starting again with these problematic areas, I'm going to just use a gentle tapping motion to get some paint into these hard to reach places. 
And then once we're done with all of those really difficult places, we're just gonna do a light dry brushing over the rest of the whole piece using a downwards motion. And when you start to feel like you're not getting enough paint transfer, just load back up on your brush, test it again in the palm of your hand, and keep working over the piece until you've covered every available surface in that light coating. Now you want to spend some special attention on the stairs here because the front edge of stairs are going to get more worn than anywhere else on the piece. And I'm going to make sure to get a good downward stroke on this leading edge of the back altar here because it's probably somewhere that gets interacted with a lot and that would cause some additional wearing. With this final dry brushing we're just looking to catch the way that the light hits the edges of the stone. So going from the top down is the best way to get a look of natural light. Right, and then give it a quick once over. Make sure that you don't have any spots that you missed or that are standing out to you. And you know, this spot here looks a little dark. We're gonna add just a bit more light on here. Maybe carry that around the corner a little. All right, and I can't do much about that hot spot. So what we're gonna do is work a little bit extra paint into our brush here and then creatively stab at a couple places here on the altar to create a few more of those hot spots. Once it looks like a mistake, Everywhere it looks like it's on purpose. All right, that blended it in nicely. Now it doesn't stand out to me at all anymore. Well, this side's a little dark though. Let's just lighten that up here. That's better. Just a little bit of final touch up on these back columns. And when you're happy with your dry brushing, set him aside to dry one last time. And there you have it, your completed altar, ready for whatever ceremonial needs your NPCs may have. At this stage, I do take mine outside for a final coating of a matte spray varnish for protection, but that's entirely optional. Now let's go see what this is going to look like on the table. As you step into the main worship chamber of the temple, the ritual comes to a sudden halt. The priestess stands upon the altar, her arms raised in supplication. She turns from the sacrificial stone to face you, her lips curled in a vicious grin. Welcome, welcome. You're just in time. Roll for initiative. And so there you have it. That is how I make my altar. Tune in for the next video. I'm going to be showing you how I make my little candelabras. Stick around. Thanks for spending some of your time here with me at Scattered Terrain. If you liked that video, hit the like button. If you want to see more, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.